press the bell icon on the YouTube app to never miss a video from News Laundry. This is a News Laundry podcast and you're listening to NL Hafta. अंग्रेज अपना लगान और न्यूज़ लॉन्ड्री अपना हफ्ता कभी नहीं छोड़ते वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ हफ्ता टुडे अदर देन रमन एंड मी हु आर इन ऑफिस एवरीबॉडी इज जॉइनिंग अस फ्रॉम जूम फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑन द पैनल टुडे फ्रॉम चेन्नई इज जयश्री हाय जयश्री हाय एंड मेहराज विल बी जॉइनिंग अस नेक्स्ट वीक आल्सो जॉइनिंग अस फ्रॉम होम इज मनीषा बिकॉज़ शी इज टेकिंग प्रिकॉशंस बिकॉज समवन क्लोज अराउंड हर हाउस वाज टेस्टेड पॉजिटिव मनीषा Manisha claims she's staying home so that she doesn't want to kind of risk infecting us if by chance she's been infected but I But suspect I'm so careful like that you know but I suspect she just wanted to basically chill out so that's also a possibility I will like, I chill out me fir main hafta bhi kyu aaungi yaar I'll properly chill out that's also true this is hardly a chilling out but then but then you'll have to <laughs> and joining us uh, right now you're in Bangalore or uh, where where are you right now Sudipto Bangalore Bangalore You're in Bangalore. Joining us is Sudipta Mandal. He's an investigative journalist. He's reported on uh, basically he's been based out of Bangalore and he's just report from much of South India on caste, communalism, corruption. He is written for the Hindu, the Hindustan Times, Al Jazeera, Live Mint, the Print, New York Times, the Federal, and you may have seen his report for News Laundry, which he did earlier this week. Yeah. He's writing a book on the death of the Dalit research scholar Rohit Vimula. Was was now I'm scared to talk about it. It's been so long. Oh, so okay. Was. So I should I should mention it. No, no, mention it now. You mentioned it. <laughs> so he was. He he's still he's he's struggling with the book he's aiming to finish hmm. on the death of the Dalit research scholar Rohit Vimula and the twenty-five year history of the organization to which he belonged, the Ambedkar Students Association or the ASA. Welcome, Sudipto. Thank you, thank you, man. So um, we'll just go over the headlines, but before we do that, can I please request you to contribute to our NL Sena project on the Bihar elections? Many of you have already contributed. Thank you for that. But we are still very far off from topping it up, which is over five lakhs. Basant is going to be based out of Bihar for the entire month. He has with him there someone to help him on production and shooting. You've already seen, I think, a couple of videos have already gone up that Basant has sent us from there. he's traveling bihar he's sending us stories and as you know this costs money and takes resources and you have always been so generous dear listeners and subscribers spread the word so we can do a good job of reporting from bihar in the run up to the election because as you know in the run up to the election there'll be all sorts of ads that will magically appear in news channels and on newspapers like you've seen they've been cluttered with up ads now you see they'll be cluttered with bihar ads so we are ad free and we depend on you so do contribute to that project and also spread the word and pay to keep news free on that note let's get the headlines uh, manisha yeah bjp has expelled nine party workers for six years for joining ljp ahead of bihar polls nitish kumar has announced jdu's seven point plan for bihar elections shiv sena is going to contest around 50 seats in bihar and three jnk teachers uh, were arrested under psa and police has claimed that the students and alumni engaged in militant activities one news that created a lot of headline was top bollywood producers are moving the high court against two news channels which is republic tv and times now they've also named anchors um, arnab goswami pradeep bhandari who is with republic bharat uh, rahul shiv shankar and navika kumar and they basically want to seek perpetual or permanent injunction against them for making or publishing irresponsible derogatory defamatory remarks against the indian film industry hindi film industry i should say meanwhile the bombay high court has asked center why not have a statutory body to control television media uh, in a very interesting exchange of letters uh, the maharashtra government uh, the maharashtra governor wrote to the maharashtra cm and said ki oh you have you become secular now because he's not uh, opening religious places in the states maharashtra cm responded that i don't need certificate of hindutva from you so we can discuss that andhra pradesh cm writes to cg cji alleges sc judge nv ramana influencing high court yeah there's someone there's someone basically accusing uh, this uh, jagan of of I, i think it's become a little more complicated maybe we can get a little bit of detail on this that there's a judge also in the high court who's accusing him of pressure or is it the other way around does anyone want to weigh in no no jagan has hmm. written to the supreme, supreme court supreme court saying that the high court judges ja- no no the supreme court judge is regulating the uh, alabad uh, sorry andhra pradesh high court okay so that's what he's saying hmm. so he is asking the chief justice of india to restrain him you know so that he does not but then and uh, and and the supreme court bar association they have really condemned it 
Okay. So this is the latest. I see. Uh, okay. Sorry. Carry on, Manisha. Consumer inflation increased to 7.34% in September. It's, it's the highest since January. IMF predicts India's per capita GDP to slip below Bangladesh. Delhi Chief Minister Arun Kejriwal demanded withdrawal of farm laws. Yeah, I think he also sat with Teban Dharna this week for a short while. In Uttar Pradesh, uh, really horrific news of a 65-year-old Dalit man uh, who was thrashed. He was forced to drink urine. Cops, as always, in Uttar Pradesh are denying everything. Uh, seven people were held in Tamil Nadu for forcing Dalit to fall at OBC man's feet. I think there were videos of this also doing the rounds, if I'm not mistaken. Ladakh Union Territory illegally set up by India, China says amid standoff. Former JNK CM Mehbooba Mufti is out of detention. This is after a year. There were pictures of her with the Abdullahs. And uh, on a related note, Farooq Abdullah gave an interview in which he said that China should, with the help of China, we will get... 370 reinstated. Yeah. So and that was, was not a very smart move. And anti-national, predictably. Mm. Mm. Allahabad High Court pulls up Uttar Pradesh government in the Hathras case. Some very strong statements were made. Hyderabad's flooded after torrential rain. I think about 32 people have died in Telangana. Yeah, it's about 16 in Hyderabad, I think. Yeah, I'm reading from, from Times of India. Yeah, it's 32 That's people right. in Telangana. Yeah, and half of them are in Hyderabad alone. In fact, apparently Hyderabad received... As much rain in a day as it usually receives in a month at this time of the year. Tanish withdraws ad on interfaith marriage following social media criticism. Though, I, you know, I dislike when newspapers and news websites say social media criticism. I think it's very targeted and the particular group that went after them online. Uh, offline also, some people landed up at their showroom in uh, Gujarat and peacefully asked for an apology, should we say. And NDTV uh, reported that the showroom was attacked, but it wasn't attacked. Uh, however, there were sort of threatening things said to the staff there. Indian Express reported that they were even abused, the staff. Uh, meanwhile, the advertising, the India chapter of International Advertising Association came out in support of Tanishq and said there's nothing unethical about it. And well, Tanishq, meanwhile, has just removed the ad. Yeah. And we've also, this is also a week where we've had Bajaj and Parleji come out and issue strong statements saying that they would not like to advertise with channels that are beyond reasonable doubt toxic and they don't want to promote hateful content. So that's also a step with big brands coming out. And a huge case that is unfolding, even as we are recording this, there is a, I think, hearing happening in the Supreme Court uh, on the TRP scam. It actually, the story broke just as we had finished recording Hafta last week. There was the Mumbai police commissioner who held a press conference saying that Republic is accused in fixing TRPs. Hmm. Uh, and in the FIR, India Today was mentioned, which he did not address. Did not. Yeah. And then India Today and Times Now and Republic went at each other. So India oh. Today went at Ti Republic. Republic went at India Today. Takwale, takwale. They said Banana Republic, <laughs> Banana Republic. Meanwhile, <laughs> Times Now said the gold standard has failed and subset whatever that has failed. We the are the best. Is also bad and we are the greatest. So, we are, so it was a very interesting week. I was quite... Yeah. This is also for the first time, I think all channels came out and reported on Republic and even News 18. Like, even Z, everyone, like everyone came out and kind of cornered said, the public. Ye mauka mila hai, toh na, chaddi na putar. Yeah. But uh, let's start with the horrific news of uh, what's happening in uh, uh, Hyderabad and that, that video that many of you may have seen of this man just being swept away by this torrential, like the road has become a river and there are cars floating. So uh, two panelists from, one is in Bangalore, one is in Chennai, may have more information than us. So Jayashree, uh, how bad is it and uh, what is the kind of uh, relief effort that has reached there? Oh, I mean, it's devastating. I think the videos and the photos that we're seeing online sort of speak for themselves. For me, it's very reminiscent of the Chennai floods in 2015, which I lived through. So right now in Hyderabad, um, I think 32 people have died across Telangana. 16 have died in Hyderabad alone, though the government said the numbers are quite likely to be higher. And I mean, the problem with Hyderabad is, as with most major cities, it's a question of poor urban planning, right? Like in Chennai, the most, of, most of Chennai is a floodplain, which they've just built over and built over for years. Similarly, in Hyderabad, colonies were constructed in low-lying areas. The Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation consists of about 190 lakes, and all of them have encroachments built around them. So with this continuous rain, all the lakes were breached. They flooded adjoining residential colonies. They flooded office spaces. They flooded all the low-lying areas surrounding it. So, and the thing is that this is a problem that has been coming up for years. Like there are dates, I think 2000, there was a terrible flood in Hyderabad. In 2016, there was a terrible flood in Hyderabad. 
but these are not sexy issues that people take up i mean you have activists and you have government some sections of the government who keep on saying that we need to do something about it we need to address it but they don't because it's a question of we want to make this the greatest city in the world we want to become like the next silicon valley so development continues but at the cost of human lives every other year so and i yeah. didn't know chennai is almost entirely a flood plain i had no idea okay yeah yeah like so, i mean very popular areas like pondi bazaar in chennai which is one of the busiest sort of markets bazaars that was a lake at some point it which they just sort of drain built over so vast sections of it have just become land i mean it was never actually it was never actually residential land but this is just sort of the state of most cities i feel and like you change the natural course of water you build over it you use wetlands to build houses and then you express shock and grief that when rains come to the extent that they've come now that these houses are destroyed so um speaking of lakes there's that famous frothing lake that makes news every every quarter Bangalore, i think yeah. once every quarter from sudipto city we see images of a frothing lake this quarter yeah. is is it making its target sudipto <laughs> uh i haven't checked recently but yeah this is a problem in bangalore i mean uh, you know actually if you look at these issues i mean definitely there is this uh, like jashi was talking about natural waterways and those you know like in bangalore it's a it's a network of lakes each of most of these lakes are connected underground and you know through aquifers so mm-hmm. one lake leads to another to another to another to another to another so that leads to an entire network of lakes getting polluted so that is the case in this this part of the city but well while we're talking ecology let's also talk real estate no i mean how uh, how real estate has kind of yeah. uh, the connection between real estate and politics you know mm. land and politics and it comes down to land and politics and the communities that hold land the communities that sell land that become rich overnight become part of big politics in a matter of a few years just by selling large parcels of land one person can become an mla you know i mean that these are this kind of stories that we have grown up listening to in a place like bangalore and hyderabad the two silicon cities i would right. imagine chennai still has old wealth chennai still has it's still an old rich place which with old uh, established neighborhoods mm. and it's a large city it's a, it's one of the big four but hyderabad and bangalore the, if you go back i mean that's what happened the sudden transformation of rural agricultural land into 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 real estate and, a bit like uh, gurgaon yeah yeah exactly that kind of thing yeah yeah and it it also coincides with the emergence of the so now you're talking about bihar and you know all these elections are happening and all that you know it goes back to what kind of became the fuel for the emergence of this backward caste politics if you look at it it is also the growth of real estate and that's what was the back on which these politics were built whether it is deve gauda whether it is uh, the you know the gaudas and the reddies of hyderabad bangalore you know land politics the emergence of real estate and then now ecology so yeah all of those are the but this hyderabad um, flooding those uh, images i mean i've been to hyderabad several times and of course there's that huge you know lake right in the middle right i i don't know what it's yeah. called but Hussain the Sagar, one yeah Hussain Sagar. yeah so is it that area that's been flooded or mm. like what parts of hyderabad have been flooded like w- when we say that because i read in one of the tickers that some some dam got breached so is it a because of the breach of a dam which a wall came down or is it just rain no they no. according to the reports hmm. the 268 locations which received more than between 20 to 30 cm of rain okay which is huge hmm. 268 locations in hyderabad and we all hyderabad areas. yes okay so so it's not just the hosain sagar i mean and it was it must be a dam outside So uh, that we are not aware so, of. So uh, Jashri, you have is is it a breach or is it just the rain and and what part of Hyderabad? Because I can't imagine that you know what are these parts that are flooded the way we saw. It's pretty much all of Hyderabad, but I mean, if you visited Hyderabad, the most popular sort of tourist areas would be Hussain Sagar, Begumpet, Central Hyderabad, Banjara Hills, you know, stuff parts of Secunderabad. All that is pretty much underwater right now. Whoa. I mean, you're talking about Chutney's Restaurant, which is one of the oldest, most popular restaurants in Begumpet. that has been almost submerged i think almost up to its roof and uh, they did open i think for the first time in 10 years they had to open 13 gates of the himayat sagar reservoir just because they didn't know what to do with the water that was accumulating so i think it was a function of too much rain and too little planning as to what to do when you have that much rain like mm-hmm. you have no system to deal with it I guess the city is also not. It is not a place that gets a lot of rain anyway, right? And maybe no, it does. It, it gets does. a lot of rain in October. I've right? stayed in Hyderabad. Yeah, yeah. So it does. 
get rain. So that's, oh, which is what I meant by this is such a perennial problem. Like every couple of years, it'll rain this much. But we only read about it now because we're like, oh my God, like shocking videos and stuff. But this is sort of old hat. I mean, it happens constantly. It's just that we don't fix it. Like Chennai right now, if it, it is very possible that Chennai would flood again in the same horrifying way that it did five years ago. I mean, they've done some big stormwater work. They've got some master plan that they're discussing. But I don't think any of that actually translates to solving a problem. But what happened five years ago had never happened before, right? Because I mean... Yeah, that was terribly unprecedented. It was yeah. like 10 times, 20 times worse than anything we've ever seen. So. And over the years, I think it's a problem of municipality. And as Jayashri says, it's not a sexy issue, so nobody covers it. Mm. I remember when we uh, this Chennai happened, I was with DNA. And we did a series of stories. I sent a reporter to Chennai. And as uh, Jashiri is pointing out, I mean, it was basically the area which has been reclaimed belonged to the rivers. It was a network of rivers. And we identified, you know, the multinational companies, the offices that have come up on those areas. So so uh, I think it's a, it's a huge issue of municipality reclaiming the land, land, you know, illegally, which needs to be, you know, looked into. Just breaking the hafta flow to give you this important announcement. We have a new site testing. We've got some fantastic feedback from for the UI and UX aspect from all the website users who we sent the link to. And if you're a developer or have worked on the website and user interface, send us an email to subscription at newsline.com. We'll send you the testing link because we want some more people to test it. So if you are a developer or have worked on a website on user interface, do send an email to subscription at newslaunch.com. We will send you a testing link as well so that we can make sure that the new website has all the good inputs that all of you can give to make sure it is a more user-friendly website. And let me remind you to pay to keep news free. Subscribe to newslaunch.com so that when the public pays, the public is served and we don't have to depend on advertising. Right. Okay, I just have a couple of emails. After that, I'd like to move on to discussing media because that has... News has been reporting on the news like never before in my lifetime. So I think all of us um, might have lots to say on that. I know I do. But before that, uh, this uh, actually a message had come to me from Agastya. I had said last time when we were having that language debate about, you know, the most ancient language. And I remember Manisha was laughing at me. And I think also Jayashri was laughing at me. I did. When I, I said did. That, that. So this very alert Hafta listener and subscriber has said, Abhinandan, you were right about the mythological story. It is said that when Shiva played his Damru, Panini, who was on one side, heard it and developed Sanskrit grammar. And Rishi Agastya, on the other side, developed the language of Tamil. That is the mythological story that is behind Tamil. So just, <laughs> I, I wasn't making it up. Just wanting to let anyway, everybody know. Okay, this email is from Tarun. Tarun says, hi guys, subscriber since Feb this year and have been enjoying almost all your content throughout this lockdown. I'm not as articulate as the rest of your subscribers, just a usual MBA guy working in Dubai. <laughs> Brilliant reporting on all burning issues, especially the Hathras coverage. Special appreciation for Manisha on Nuisance and Atul on Tippani. My parents have also, also started regularly watching these two. Yay. Never, never discontinue them. Only thing I'm at times pissed off is the tech issue on your website. There is no option to download the interviews or reports in the audio format. I can understand that it's being behind a paywall. You can't directly give a YouTube link, but there should definitely be a way. One thing is amusing. You have a download option for Hafta, but no other podcast or interview. Please fix this. So Tarun, as you have heard me say regularly on the Hafta for the last few weeks that we have a new website coming up. I don't know if you're one of the subscribers who was sent the test link. About 100 of our subscribers were sent a test link for a new website. Uh, many of you have given feedback. We are fixing some of the glitches. The podcast player had many glitches. So many of these inputs that have come, you will see in the new website it will develop. I had actually thought the new website will go up today when I record this, which is Thursday afternoon and it is the 15th of October. But uh, we are still fixing some of the glitches and some feedback many of you have sent. So it may take another maybe three, four days to put the new website out, but we will keep developing and fixing it even after it's up. So Tarun, this recommendation of yours has come in from many people and this will be addressed. Uh, and this email is from Swaroop. Dear Abhinandan, discipline and fear are primarily a military concept. The same cannot be applied to children. The moral decline of the current generation can be traced to fear in children while growing up. Children listen to parents out of fear or reward. However, over time, the child keeps pushing the boundaries and figures out that even if they cross the line, nothing will happen. Even if they get a whack, they figure out they can take the whack. We unconsciously condition them, implying fear will get things done in life. 
Learning should be used to distinguish between right or wrong, not fear. You might not have been messed up while growing up does not mean every child reacts the same way to fear. Of course, Swaroop is being very kind in assuming I'm not messed up, but thank you, <laughs> Swaroop. Every child is different, yet the same. They are children. You gave the example of the coach. What was he supposed to do? Yell at a child? He is supposed to teach the skills and train the kid in football. Fear is the easiest way for a teacher to enforce discipline. He might not have the required skill to do so without using fear. Put yourself in the coach's shoes. He might not have a decent income for the last six months and will not push back on your kid's behavior. All parents or kids do not react the same way of a trainer trying to enforce discipline. We wonder why society is violent and yet not see the obvious. Education and learning are two different concepts. Kids might be educated but not learn anything. This is why situa we have the situation today. They might know what secularism is but would not have understood why we need to be secular. I have a six-year-old daughter. It is tough to bring up children without fear and yet teach them the right thing. But that is the challenge. To teach a kid without using fear, it is easy for the privileged to talk about bringing up kids in an alternate way. But if the privileged cannot do it, who else will? I would suggest you read about J. Krishnamurti's thoughts on education. Krishnamurti's schools in India and the world follow a path of teaching kids without fear. Children might not score 99.99 in JE but will grow up to be decent human beings with enough skills to earn a good living. Below is a video about J. Krishnamurti's thoughts on education. Manisha will definitely like this. So before I move on and discuss the media, I would like to get um, Sudipto's view on this. Sudipto, we discussed last week on um, education. There was lots of, you know, on the competitive exam and stuff. Was it last week? Last to last week, no? When Shetan was on, I think? Yeah, last to last week, sorry. So first of all, you want to react to Swaroop's email? What is your view on education and teaching children and fear and corporal punishment and the likes? Uh -huh. I mean... Uh... No, nobody, no, I mean, it's, it's a morally settled issue, na? Marna, peetna, bachon ko, nahi, nahi. my goodness. Because I, I mean, I speak also from the experience of, uh, well, I, I am very proud to say this, okay, of, of being part of a football team where I was helping out with the coaching, okay. And uh, haha, wah pe, uh, we had to work against our instincts to use uh, the threat to violence. And so therefore, uh, the, the coach had set up a very good model. So, the, you know, in a very democratic kind of way, they would, uh, the punishments, there would be punishments, of course, but it would be exercises and all of that, which the team themselves would de decide all that. But uh, that takes a lot of time. I don't know. Uh, but nay, nay, of course, it's a settled thing. No? But that is still fear, right? I mean, my thing was that of not even raising your voice, there's, I mean, I, I do think that it is in a context. I'll give an example of, you know, we had this um, person from Germany who had come and took, he took over as the headmaster of my old school. And he didn't, because he was from there, you know, like there's the Krishnamurti model here. There is the, what's it called? The, the... Can I, okay. So the, one of the experiences with, with the children over there for, for us was that you had, okay, there was girls and boys playing football and young boys even as young as 9, 10, 11 and all that, they all are competing to be alpha. Okay, there is, among them, there is threat to violence. And then, you know, sometimes, the, you know, you, you have to pull them apart with, not a threat to violence, but quite roughly. Okay, and these are issues that come up from time to time. Okay, young boys have discovered, and I must say, I should have, I mean, I should have known, but now it's like a realization. This is that, man, it starts very, very young nine, eight, seven-year-old boys trying to be all like, yeah, you know, and trying to dominate uh, girls who are like 12, 13, 14, saying that, ah, okay, I'll come, I'll pick her up, you know, because the practice used to be at five o'clock in the morning, hmm. it would be dark and all that. And so these guys would be like, ha ha, okay, I'll take response. I'm like, man, you can't even put on your studies. <laughs> you <know? laughs> no, I, I get that you, you know, violence is a different thing. No. <laughs> but, but fear, I, I do well, think no, you I'm can't... Not fear. How do you, it's very confusing for, I'm just saying that guys who are violent at that age is very difficult to, it is important to tell them that there is a stronger force over here. So you are strong, maybe yes, stronger than the girl who's your age, even let's say, because you are getting more eggs than she is. Right. Okay. But uh, even if you take that into thing, the, the, the force of deterrence, right, that policing has to be some kind of menacing thing, presence only. Otherwise, these jokers are not taking you seriously. Okay. It's, I've never raised my hand among them and I've, I've been given like many sessions with them. It never came down to like I had to like, yeah, but it could be edgy man dealing with those guys at that age. But, you know, coming to Swaroop's point, fear I get, of course, you shouldn't hit, that's a no-no. But absence of fear, I'm not sure it works. Like, like the Krishnamurti system here, there's like the Waldorf system in Germany, Waldorf schools. And mm. 
I mean, my own uh, sister's kids went to Waldorf schools, and it's a very alternative system. No punishment. If you don't feel like going to class, go do farming. Yeah, yeah. Go make cheese. Go milk I'm the cows. My brother was teaching in one of the schools. Yeah, in Odisha, in Korapur. So, I, I, the... even my sister was teaching at a Waldorf school, you yeah, know, in Tamil yeah, Nadu. Yeah. So I get it, but the point is that now the example I was giving was my old school. So this guy from Germany came. He said teachers will not raise their voices, will not raise their hand. Uh, house captains cannot punish the juniors. Within two years. the results went south so fast they had not gone south ever now i'll tell you why because it's not i i get the intent is right but the child is not growing up in germany the child is growing up in india the child when he goes out of his house he sees that a cop is how how everybody deals with everybody it's not germany where you walk out and everything is working nobody is exerting their bullying or influence in unsavory ways in germany just you know from the time i remember when i the first time i went there some guy cut in front of the line and took a cab while i was there the other people around were so ashamed because they said you know they could tell i'm not from germany they said this is not what it's like we'll get you a cab and i said you don't have to relax and so there were actually people around me who were ashamed of that one person's behavior so th- this kind of you know um, appealing to your better sense works in a context and the example i gave was that when you have children exposed to the kind of violence and the systems that they see i don't see how you can run a school unless you have fear i i really don't see how you can do that but that's the thing right i mean if you can't suddenly change the entire system and bring it in and then try it for a couple of years and say it's failing because it would fail these things work when they start from the beginning and i i mean i i believe that you shouldn't be working or studying under sort of atmospheres of fear i believe you should fear consequences of acting up of not doing your work of being whatever So the fear of consequences, I think, is totally healthy because that will sort of deter you from doing anything. And I think you should operate on respect. And yeah, respect and fear might be quite closely intertwined. But I don't think that students can thrive in systems. And the thing is, it's very difficult to change because our systems are decades, years old. So it's not something that we can even fix in an immediate way. But I definitely don't think that fear helps in any fashion. Like. Anyone want to weigh in, Manisha no, Ramansa? Fear, fear I'm alone curious. cannot. I, I mean, you know my opinion yeah. about this. I have spoken, uh, hmm. you know, many times. Fear alone cannot help. Uh, you know, bringing up, uh, you know, children in a very healthy fashion. Hmm. So I think it's a, it's a, it could be a mix. But then, who is going to decide that mix? Sure. So that's that's another major problem. So I, I personally feel that uh, fear we should. try our best not to you know strike you that as an incentive or a disincentive ah, fear, yes. right but i should point out that i mean to add on to what sarita said about the football thing i don't ha- personally have kids and i've never worked with kids so as to how to solve this problem of of boys from the beginning assuming these sort of masculine hyper masculine identities i don't know how to solve it but i don't think that fear really would solve it yeah anyone want to weigh in before we move on to the trp case I don't know. There are some ancient monastic orders and all of that which are quite interesting. I don't know. Are there? Has anybody studied anything in Buddhism or something? The the monks, the orders. I don't know. कुछ है वहाँ पे anyone? <laughs> well, I I have shot I have shot at various monasteries around the country and even in Sri Lanka. There also fear is used because the young monks. Uh, we caught them outside. We were shooting a food show and we had a meal inside the monastery. We came outside and there were these two young monks sitting at the dab outside. He said hello. He said, "Oh, don't tell inside you were eating. We'll be punished." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." So <laughs> But they come out more sorted than we did, no? So I suppose there's a mixed balance there. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they come more sorted than us. Yeah, I mean, I am. Uh, my essential problem with schools is the the stress and fear. You know how mm. you're just made to fear every little thing. And I think that needs right. to. Be. Yeah, that is true. No, no, I hated mm-hmm. life when I was in school and college. Just let's. That's hey, like. Hey, yeah. we can be friends. I hated school too. Yeah, ACJ was the first time I felt like okay, I was learning something. Yeah, you know, same. Open school, open book exams. People just discussing. You know, there's no like stick wielding. Nothing. You lose out on marks at most. Hmm. I I also hated my school, <laughs> but uh, but I loved my college days. I uh, suddenly I got a lot of freedom. Right. <laughs> I loved both. So <laughs> okay. So now um you know this is a very important uh, issue that we're going to be discussing and I'm glad we have the panel that we do. I'll just give a context and then maybe we can start off with Manisha and then uh, you know the rest of the panel can weigh in. Uh, right now as we're recording this the news broadcasters association the NBA 
uh, has welcomed the decision of BARC. BARC has decided that they will suspend the measurement of TRP points for the next 12 weeks. Now, this is yeah, a three months, huge, no? huge announcement. A, I'm wondering how will ad sales team sell ad space? And how does that change news also? You know, I'm wondering if in the next three months we'll see, I don't know, news move to something better, calmer, nicer. Okay, so that is going to be an interesting thing to see. But the context is that last week on Thursday, as you were recording Hafta, the police commissioner of Mumbai held a press conference and said Republic is fixing TRPs by bribing some people to watch their channels. This opened a Pandora's box of how flawed Bark is. We did a few reports on this. Probably by the time Hafta goes up, we'll have another report up on this. And the police, the Mumbai police perhaps justifiably were accused of being partisan and using this to attack Republic unfairly. Uh, and I don't think that is an unreasonable uh, kind of assumption. But the whole TRP thing was scrutinized. And clearly there are many flaws with it. On the back of that, Parley and Bajaj announced last week. In fact, Bajaj said they have stopped advertising on toxic channels for a long time. Parley said they will also stop. In the meantime, Tanishk put up an ad which showed, you know, a Hindu woman married to a Muslim guy and in their family, they are having a God Bharai kind of ceremony for her. And it was a Hindu ceremony. It was a Hindu ceremony and it is, see how beautiful India is that we wear gold jewelry and we do these lovely things. And of course, the Hindu right said, how dare they? They are promoting Love Jihad. Tanishk withdrew the ad. There was that, what Manisha spoke about in Gujarat. One showroom was threatened. They put up an apology. They were not attacked, but they were intimidated enough to put up an apology. And Republic has gone to court, to the Supreme Court, saying that the Mumbai police should not take any coercive action. And their CFO has been questioned. Lots of people have been questioned. And the whole TRP thing is under scrutiny. Now, that is the context. Now, there are so many things that are intertwined here. We'll first let Manisha attempt mm. to lay them threadbare one by one. The TRP, the Tanishk, the social media wow. storm. and and, yeah, and Tanishk together. And the toxic channels and advertising and how our model of pay to keep news free is best. Because we don't <laughs> depend on advertising. We don't <laughs> depend on TRPs. I'll just do that myself. Pay to keep news free, all of you who have been whining about how horrible media is. Thousands of you are paying. Thank you. But our monthly burn is pretty expensive. It can also touch 40 lakhs. And also to let you know, I have just spent almost 2 lakhs on lawyers in the last week because our wonderful reporter Pratik, <laughs> an FIR was filed against him for on a very story flimsy he did ground. on very flimsy ground. We will have a full report up on this, the kind of intimidation that is faced. And while we are clear, we've done nothing wrong. But the legal charges have to be borne. Na? Mm. Ab wo kon bear karega? So this is the environment we operate under. Please take it from me, Manisha. So this TRP thing, look, we uh, have been reporting this for a very long time now. And in fact, in 2018, we had a very similar report involving the same set of characters, but the news channels were different, involved Bark, involved Hansa. Hansa filed a you know police complaint against an individual who'd been bribing people uh, to watch news, India news. You might want to tell people what Hansa is, that the guys watching, oh, hearing, sorry, listening. So Hansa Research Private Limited is a, it's a Mumbai-based company and Bark often uh, collaborates with them to find panel homes hmm. and, uh, you know, take care of that research bit for them. And Hansa usually, uh, back in 2018, a similar thing had happened. Hansa found out that their own employee was leaking out information on panel homes and was bribing these homes to watch certain channels for money. And it's pretty much the same thing that's happened here also in this case. Hansa again found out that one of their employees had been uh, bribing homes at the behest of channels. And uh, their research, I mean, the initial complaint names India Today, but police, Mumbai police have said that when they went and interrogated, only Republic TV's name came out and no one named India Today. But anyway, they're and, and two other Marathi channels. Two other Marathi channels. So we've been reporting on this and not just bribing channels. That's just one way of doing it. There's also double frequency, which is like Republic appearing in two frequencies on two channels or Republic appearing in news and entertainment. I for your news channel, you idly cannot appear in the entertainment segment channel. But, you know, they often pay and appear in two channels to rig up ratings. There's also um, buying landing pages. So TRP has the whole system. And this is Pranoy Roy as early as I think 2008 pointed out that this mm. was really not yeah. a very transparent system. It is just that it had been benefiting the likes of India Today Group, Aaj Tak, 
and other channels who they, they were happy to have this because it benefited them because they were number one till for a very long time now when republic comes and beats them at their own game you know with more gusto suddenly everyone's got together and said oh you know actually there's a problem with trps which i think is good i mean in whatever way it has happened it's good that there's a rethink a in uh, questioning how transparent the system is how easily it can be rigged and also i think uh, questioning whether these ratings are good enough for advertisers to even decide you know where they put their money on which channel they put their money on because it's such a small apart from the sample size just the just how easy it is to tamper with how can so much money be riding on a system which is so easily tamperable if that's a word so i think that's uh, let's see what comes of it because we know that i didn't hear of anything much from the 2018 cases when hansa had pointed out at uh, Uh, I think it's a, it's a, uh, I think it's a sample of forty four thousand houses all yeah, over 44, India. Yeah, forty four thousand houses. Ah, forty four thousand houses, and which have been wired, and these people are trying to find out who is watching what. You know, I um, mean, and, and there are eight crores. I think eight crore people who are watching uh, this, who watches news and all. Manisha, is uh, it eight crore? Total number of viewership. Ah, uh-huh, viewership. In India, television viewership. Total number of people watching is eighty four crore. Eighty four crore. Uh, yes. Eighty four crore is the viewer, but the that that is uh, the number of people households are i think 44000 uh, no sample. that is a 44000 is a sample size ah. 84 crore is a viewership viewership yeah so 84 crore viewership i think is but the number of television sets is i think 1/4 of that or something 1/3 so each television set assumes three or four people right Mm. So I mean yeah it is it is seriously problematic I completely agree but I think what is interesting is how all the channels went at each other I for one am thrilled and I think the earlier they destroy each other's credibility we can put to rest this flawed model and not because everybody running that model was evil but because there was no other way to make it sustainable now that there are other ways I think we need to really do away with this and yeah. I would like to point out in a week where the up government was facing justifiably so much flack mm. and you know maybe manisha can tell us what happened in the uh, alhabad high court also of the kind of toxic casteism displayed in the horrific brutalization of a young dalit girl yesterday's times of india had a full, full page, page ad of yogi adityanath yeah. announcing that they're going to be doing for the next month a joint whatever project of health healthy uttar pradesh and today Yesterday was a full page ad. Today there's an interview of Yogi Adityanath in the Times of India. There was this. Uh, this I, was, I just want to uh, add Indian one Express, thing to the TRP bit. Can I? What? 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 Yeah. One second. Ravan was saying. Indian Express had the lead story on Hathras and Allahabad High Court, hmm. whereas Times of India, where we had the full page ad, hmm. had very small three column. report on the front on page the, exactly and it does matter in fact when you open the times of india the full page was uh, you know telling us how great yogi yes. ji is then you open it with the mast head there was uh, arvind kejriwal smiling and telling us how great he is and the front page was full of shit and also the headline see you need to look at all these things very carefully i mean when the when the advertisement comes the headline changes so so the headline is very uh, uh, benign benign and it was just saying that the dm should be punished it was an accusatory DM, like ac- that action should be taken against you were so saying, they're trying to make it a local issue you know manisha you were saying just from the trp thing i wanted to add is that what really you know annoys me is how trps are used by news anchors to justify their lazy and now terrible journalism that oh we are doing ssr because the nation wants to watch it and you're deciding that on the basis of again 44000 homes and a system which is easily rigged and because of that you're painting an entire news consumer as this you know consumer that just wants to watch crap that doesn't expect information from its news channels and i think that also has to fundamentally change because now you have the internet we know i mean news laundry knows from the youtube shows that we do what the demand is for good content out there we right. know that also on youtube trending uh, you know list you'll often find a ravish kumar there you'll never find an arnab goswami there mm. you know rarely would actually i've never seen arnab goswami trend so there sometimes but you will have a ravish kumar's you know report or a discussion on employment or something important trend so how can we on the basis of this flawed trp system just say that oh the news consumer is you know just wants masala so we give masala i i hope that also yeah, change that that narrative yeah i think that narrative change uh, uh, yeah uh, you want to come in on this so dipto what do you think of yeah. this and how bad is it in uh, you know language media in let's say bangalore you know kannada media and others 
Sure. No, first I'll, I'll respond quickly to this advertising bit. You know, uh, the advertising I- industries, I mean, the investments that the advertising industry receives is uh, very sensitive to uh, market corrections, right? Because I, I spent a little bit of time in advertising enough to know that uh, they are, are always trying to get a sense of the people's sentiment and all of that. And what I just want to tie that point up to what Manisha was saying, which is that in terms of credibility, for every advertiser, the reason they go in for a news outlet is because the it's following implies that there is some credibility to it. And if you look at the following that, like like she said, uh, you know, people such as Ravish Kumar, you know, even uh, uh, you guys, Siddharth, what Caravan is doing, Dhanya, I mean, just the entire honors list, right? If you put them out there, their following is actually only increasing. And that adds to their credibility and eventually that market correction will happen. Uh, despite, I, I know what you what you think about advertisers and companies and we all share the, those sentiments. But nevertheless, the correction may come in the form of adver- more advertising in online platforms, which News Laundry will not accept because they don't believe in advertising, of course. But I'm talking about the others. Yeah, so there's that thing. About the regional media, uh, well, I don't think the money is coming from advertisers as much as it is coming from Hafta Vasuli. Okay, the co- I mean, this is something I'm sure all of us already know. But uh, just to confirm that one fact, which is that reporters of various channels have been asked to go and get money, this much money per month, all of that. Channels are playing absolutely anything, passing off absolutely anything as news. Uh, these are Kannada channels I'm talking about. If you do a survey of regional channels anywhere in the south or in the north or the east or the west, I mean, my friends, uh, you know, from from Assam were, were talking about how reporter they reach for their wallet or their gun. <laughs> okay, that's not like there are many, but there's a lot of you know. I'm not saying that yeah, I'm not saying that they're violent people. But regional media is too to the state governments also. I mean, yeah, they're exactly. mostly they, playing. They also depend. Uh, so um, huge. Yeah, oh, state government patronage. Oh, of course, yes, sir. Important point, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's major state government patronage. But last quick point, which is that in Karnataka, you know, there's been this trend of each politician or a group of politicians who might even cut across party lines promoting a channel. So as their mouthpiece in some ways. So that is the thing. I mean, all these channels, I don't want to take names. Some of those names hopefully will come as a, as part of a result of, of, a, of some proper investigation someday of papers and documents. But the press club is full of talk of how, I mean, guys who are part of three different parties are behind a channel, all of that. So yeah, quick point. Yeah. And quickly, if you just want to pitch your story to our listeners, those of them who haven't read it, what it's about in five lines. And why they oh, should yeah, read it. Yeah, the Power TV story. Yeah, of course. Uh, no, firstly, um, um, thanks uh, News Laundry for spotting that story. Yeah, I just put it out as a tweet saying, hey, look what's happening. But you guys gave it the importance that it deserves. You know, Manisha got in touch quickly saying, hey, can you do this story? And of course, I had the chance to work with the amazing uh, Meharaj Lone, who I think is coming in the next episode. Yes. Yeah. What a good newsroom gatekeeper. I, you know, shout out to him. He got out like some really... <laughs> I'll tell you about the embarrassing errors later. But yeah, hmm. uh, that... Story finally got some. We don't have to since they didn't make it to the copy. We don't so have so to what? Yet. But what was the story? Tha <laughs> pachra tha kya? What was the pachra? Pachra was basically that uh, you know there are no heroes in the story. It is not. Yes, a channel got taken off air for the first time in India's history of private news channels. No, never has it happened that a bunch of poppers have just landed up and unplugged the channel. Literally just taken it off air. But uh, yeah, on the other side, there was no hero because the channel itself was run by this guy who firstly carried the story in a very weird way. There's a huge gap in the story, which is that uh, on the 2nd of September, a promo goes out in on Power TV saying that uh, the royal family of, of Karnataka, we're going to expose their saga and all of that. And that's all. I mean, there's one audio clip in which uh, supposedly the son of the chief minister is talking, uh, d- uh, discussing kickbacks. For 15 days, the story doesn't play. And guess what? On the 2nd of September, the same day, Bangalore cops suddenly discover there's ganja on the market. Okay. And they go start bursting into people's houses. Actors get picked up. Same on the 2nd of September. For 15 days, this drama goes on, in which time Power TV is quiet about the story. Yadurapa is going to um, Delhi to discuss cabinet expansion. On that day, Fatak, the story comes back again on Power TV. So a lot of it is murky, of course. But the question that I kind of left uh, with in the piece is what was the rest of the media doing? Just finally on Sunday, uh, Indian Express carried the story. The documents in this alleged scam have been out there forever for anybody who cares to look at them. But uh, that was not the focus. And oh, and the best part is the so-called deep throat, the whistleblower in this story. 
he is also one shady murky character who ha- who was raided in he is a businessman who 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 at some point claims that he is trying to expose these politicians but this guy was caught with uh, large sums of money by the cbi after the demonetization thing all of that so i don't know all of these people it makes you wonder where the hell regular straight forward journalism went you know and th- this is i think an important story you know important point that you said that there's no hero here i think it's a bit like republican times now going at each other and you know oh, yeah, with, yeah. with 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 an ad of yogi ji thrown in and this is what is wrong with the media so i think it's an extremely important story to understand the rot and how deep it is and how structurally yeah. it's 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 rotten but yeah. uh, jayshri uh, you want to weigh in on this whole trp thing and can i add one quick point i'm sorry i don't want to cut jayshri of course no, uh, to add to this drama about uh, what was happening the fight between republic and the other channels and all that in our whatsapp groups and messages like we got calls from our friends in the television media think be careful when you are in press club or around journalists and stuff like that there are some channels which are trying to do a sting on other journalists to expose other channels and all of that ah so, god yeah so they were, they, <laughs> reporters were warned of a sting basically saying that yeah i'm not going to name the channel which supposedly did that but you guys can guess <laughs> yes. so you're right someone from uh, another channel uh, one of the big five english channels has informed me we didn't do a story because she didn't want it to be done a story she said it just become messy so another english channel that has been in the news the, their reporter asked the reporter of this other channel so what's happening and and you know like reporters say yaar ab bhai chutiya panti chal rahi hai sab bakwas you know either you'll bitch out your boss or you'll bitch out something which is what many employee would do you know even if, when i was young as probably but then this reporter she realized that this cameraman is very shadily behaving with while the reporter is talking to her so they forced that guy to show what he had recorded he had recorded that conversation and they went back he had recorded the con- such conversations with five other reporters around there so basically there was this report recording conversations like you know you're waiting at a press conference you're standing outside for like 2 hours reporters talk to each other you bitch out your boss you do what these guys will do is they'll say dekhe apne hi reporter bolte hain ki mera boss chutiya hai whatever the fuck it is you know <laughs> they made him delete it they made him delete it and among all the journalist group on whatsapp was sent please do not talk to this reporter from this channel i mean this is what it's come to fucking can you imagine sorry uh, jessie go ahead on on this ha i mean i think all the channels now sort of huffing and puffing are ignoring the fact that everyone knows that this entire thing is rigged everyone knows that a scam has existed for decades i mean i think uh, sy kureshi did this piece in indian express a few days ago where he said 20 years ago he uh, uncovered a similar sort of scan involving doordarshan where it was rigged against doordarshan i'm saying so other people had rigged it so and now what i find i think most insufferable is okay yeah great channels are coming together they're all criticizing republic which is fair as they should but what i find insufferable is how now everyone is assuming this high horse they're claiming moral superiority they're saying bring down republic how dare they do it we demand justice but they know that they are players in this same game like it's all very well to pretend that Re- republic is now the villain but i'm sure half these channels are villains in their own way so and look at their coverage i mean the other kind of stuff they do for ratings yeah. the kind of rubbish that people have to watch every day because we're told that this is what we need to know we don't need to know this so i yeah i find it loathsome that now channels assume that they've got this sort of I don't know that they have they're on a high horse when compared to Republic. I mean, we're plumbing the depths of television right now. But speaking of high horse and these days, the delusion may kind of be rested. So, ab you know, I'd like Raman sir to come in after that. You know, this bunch of producers, including um, Karan Johar, Ajay Devgan's production company, Akshay Kumar's production company, Shah Rukh Khan's production company, Salman Khan's production company, what forty of them. have filed a case against times on republic and they have named the four reporters journalists if you want to call them that which i think is <laughs> stretching the definition anchors. of journalism you can just call them anchors <laughs> anchors or performers saying that they should be restrained it is not a criminal or a civil case where they want damages they're saying they have to be restrained in how they talk about the film industry and they've said ki and, and of course you if you've been watching it we yeah. are doing a full on report on all the stuff they've said manisha we've been going to putting that out right video report yeah 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 so you know they've said the most ye niche hai ye sare druggies hain ye sab aise hain waise hain so on that you know both navika and rahul shiv shankar said fighting for justice makes people go to court we welcome such action jaise ki dev bhagat singh's you know to win reincarnation bring it on bring it on <laughs> so now that happened i just think and then this whole tanishk thing you know 
and Parle Ji and these guys were drawing advertising from toxic channels. I think this is wonderful news for the news industry. Cleanse, it's a purge. And um, the quicker it happens, the better it is. Yeah. And, and while it does discredit news in the short run, I think in the long run, a, a more robust ecosystem will emerge. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is deeply rotten. You were saying, Manisha, on this advertising of these guys who withdrawn. Also, by the way, Parle Ji withdrew. So on social media again, Ab, who eats Parle Ji? We will, we will boycott Parle Ji. Then someone else says, tell me an orphanage. I will donate 10,000 packets of Parle Ji to that orphanage. You know, now <laughs> we've come to the stage where even marketing, advertising is partisan. It's, it's reached that level. And I, I'm still on the fence whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I don't know. Let's see. I think A, on the uh, Bollywood producers going to court against Times and Republic, I think it's an excellent move. And I think journalists should actually come out and support it and call out stuff like this. Because when Navika says this is an attack on free speech, every journalist who respects the profession and who is passionate about the profession and cares about the profession should counter it and say, no, this has got nothing to do with free speech or even doing journalism. It's yes. got everything to do with tabloidization and slander. I mean, we know this slander is not part of journalism. You cannot run hashtags like arrest Ria now. And or, you can't just uh, make up your own shit, yeah. You can't, you can't just make up shit on your own. There, there was a hashtag like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What? Of course, these guys have crossed all lines. And I, I mean, honestly, all I don't line of I have I, oh my God. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Huh? Okay. So this is, I mean, uh, and it is ridiculous if Shekhar Gupta is being a bit, you know, whatever, iffy on it on the video. I haven't seen it, but. Every anyone who practices journalism as a profession, as a craft, should call this out. We we've, we've not been taught to do this. We've not been taught to like slander people, and not and not one debate discussion of theirs did they ever even forget. You want to slander someone, fine, but you always at least you know have that formality of reaching out to the other side. Not one of their debates had that. Not one of the debates had maybe Shah Rukh Khan or Karan Johar and asked them, "Ki bhai, this is what we feel about you. Would you like to respond?" So I mean, it's not to me. It's it is only, and I think more and more people should do it. I think Richard Chadda going to court against that lady who just randomly took her name is great. Hmm. Because this has reached a point where, and see, Republic Times now have been doing it for a long time, except their victims have been too weak to hit back. They've called women at Shaheen Bagh, you know, paid uh, women, hmm. biryani khane aati hai. The worst kind of things said about women and children who sat there. That they take shift ka leti hai. Hmm. Exactly. I mean, how can you say that about someone, yeah? That they take 500 you know, take shift or take food. They've done it against Umar Khalid, you know, ran complete propaganda against them. They did it in, with the Hathras victim, where Arnab Goswami actually on Republic Bharat said, ki ye samuhik balatkar ki baat kahan se aai, ye to manohar kahani likh di kisi ne. Hmm. You know, someone's died, yeah. So it someone is has died in, and, and someone and has PhD, given, uh, given a dying statement. Has given a dying declaration. Yeah. Given I want to add one thing. You should see Nidhi and Akanksha's video report from Hathras where this Republic Bharat woman is harassing the family in the house. Now they are too weak to hit back against these guys. Hmm. But they've been doing it for too long. And I, I'm happy that, you know, a powerful organization like Bollywood can take them on. So at least it's some, you know, some karma or some, some sort of restraint. And if you notice, times and... Uh, Arnab have both stopped doing SSR debates huh, since then. Yes, they've completely... They never address it. But, they've not even, but the Bollywood thing, they're not asking for restraint. They're asking for like a permanent injunction against defamatory remarks against Bollywood on these channels. Yeah. This is something that I think a court will never actually give you that kind of injunction. Yeah, absolutely. I think what they're asking, the, the kind of injunction they're asking for is impossible because it can't be, you know, carte blanche like forever, indefinitely, you know. But on the pertaining to the SSR case, right? No, even on it's that, not, I don't know, if, I don't know if they qualified it. I, I think this this case is more. It's just a pushback because yeah. purely in legal terms, I mean, you can't get an injunction like that. In all fairness, but ये चुप हो गए हैं. That is the only. No, but thing. the issue, the entire issue, has you know uh, brought out focus on one thing. There is an institutional failure so far as uh, you know these anchors are concerned. I mean, the, we have a self-regulatory body which doesn't work. These people come up with on their own theories, their own uh, fake news, and nobody is able to control them. Hmm. So this is the institutional failure. This is what it confirms. And second most important thing is that Bollywood as a collective body can take them on. Yes. So, so these these two things are, uh, I think these yeah. two are the... These are the two key takeaways. key takeaways. But I think also what is you need pushback because, I mean, you see the Tanishq ad... The Tanish cat is not offensive in any way. At all. But the Hindu right has said that this promotes love jihad. I mean, can you imagine? And there ah. is no restraining them. They are emboldened enough and Tanish clearly feels that, dude, this is enough to screw us. So they apologize. They withdraw the ad. Their stock price falls. 
if this is the world we live in and if we let it carry on secularism will be a bad word look at this yeah. buffoon of a yeah. governor yeah what a thing to say in a situation like I mean, this are you write a letter making it seem like secularism is some sort of a barb i mean if this is the world we live in you have to push back in a situation like this the state government the judiciary the central government and the police they should come forward and they should tell tarish no you don't need to withdraw it we'll take care of that yeah. so no, in such cases no one comes forward so lot of things are happening you know institutional failures that exactly. i'm talking about and those who exactly. have the where with all should push back absolutely yes yeah. and I, i mean at least now i have stopped expecting a fair fight i find it interesting that while i do think that the bombay police is partisan in what they're doing with arnab and it is very uh, unfair i just think it ironic that a man who has never cared for fairness in any case he's reported on he's never reported the circus he's run suddenly is so concerned about the fairness of a probe hmm. and he has never been concerned with the fairness of a probe <laughs> in fact he has wh- what did he call uh, umar in his studio that you're a terrorist you should be in jail ah. you are more dangerous than maoists i mean th- this is the man who now wants fairness like seriously <laughs> so i really think the time for fair fight is gone what about defamation i mean nothing kuch bhi nahi actually bhi you know i would have hoped for civil suit like damages Huh. Actually, produce. I mean, they, and they have ample grounds to do it in this case. Actually, you're right. A better case would have been specifics. He said this, 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 this. Mm. Therefore, yeah, this much damages. It. Yeah. Yeah. Prove it. Even Dipika and all. Like, it, mm. she should. Yeah. You should actually take them to court. And on the Tanish thing, I do think that it's a bit of a mistake that even journalists do. That when first you start, when when the ad started first facing backlash, instantly media picks it up to say there's social media outrage, public outrage. Mm. This wasn't a case of public outrage. I don't think most of the public is upset with it. It's a very coordinated attack by the right wing. Yeah. And if you put it at that pedestrian, then you know you're just amplifying it when you're expecting an action also from Tanish. I think we should also call out what it is. You know, this I really don't think many people would have any problem with this. Manisha is so right about it because we need to report it like this that it was a coordinated. Uh, you know attack by the hindu right is why i am saying so i have just come back you know from uttarakhand mm. the the far flung areas they were trying to dislodge you know some muslim barbers they have a shop muslims have got some the so called bajrang sena i mean they have so this there's saffron, a new sena ha saffron gamcha you know around them and they mm. are going around and they said these guys should go away and we will take away their work so the locals the police said ki boss i mean you don't have a barber so who is going to do that barber service mm. so they let them stay there but now they have you know appointed their own people they have given them training they have opened four barber shop just to dislodge this muslim barber so 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 much is happening on the ground and we need to report it like that mm. the way uh, yeah, manisha it can't said. be general uh, it can't social. be general it can't be public mm. b- public outcry you know it's, there, it's, there are organizations yes. there are specific journal in fact yes. Abhijit Majumdar, who was editor of Mail Today, who was the one of these nutter Hindu right journalists, had actually tweeted. Interesting to see the what angle emerge, the honor killing angle emerge in the Hathras case. Wonder what the other journalists who were saying it's a caste issue are saying now. No such angle emerged. Mm. There was yeah. just one stupid bit of news which two predictable channel played up that there were over six months there were five hours worth mm. of calls total, mm. which means mm. the calls lasted between eight seconds and like. 90 seconds mm. and th- therefore it no such angle emerged and that angle hasn't emerged i mean how dare these guys get away with shit like this Absolutely. Yeah? it's disgusting and and the, and the, and the problem that i have is that when i call these guys out in an intemperate language many well meaning friends say oh you know you should not be like that they also journalists why the fuck not here yeah? who the fuck says i should be polite to such horrible human beings i don't think they deserve any fucking politeness yeah i'm very over this idea that people need to be polite while engaging with people who are saying absolute lies like they're lying, lying through their face but you're expected lies. to sort of be polite and like if i was reading this thing recently where uh, when you're talking about how newspapers report on politicians who are telling lies people say that you when you're putting it in a headline your headline should clearly mention that this is an untruth or you should clarify that in your strap or whatever you shouldn't just put it in quotes and let it go as a news update as a news organization you should be pointing out that things are right or things are wrong like and i'm saying factually not based on opinion or whatever so 
And I think we saw that in the coverage of Hathras. We're seeing it in the coverage of Tanishk also. How, I mean, what is social media outrage? Technically, anything is social media outrage. I mean, mm. pick one topic, somebody is outraging on it. I can take two tweets and say these two tweets constitute outrage on social exactly. media. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, exactly. Like, and that's what happens. And that's that's how like these quick copies are churned out. That, oh, social media, Twitter arty upset. I mean, yeah. Yeah, people are not Twitter arty. No? And then I, I think after this the whole, like well-meaning people justifying the ban saying that i mean they're not well meaning people but whatever respectable so called quote and good people justifying it saying that you know there've been uh, there's been a case of a boy who was murdered in delhi because he was in love with a muslim girl and the father uh, and the brothers got together and killed him so you know this is hurtful this is not the reality but if we are going to go by reality then nothing can ever be made in india yeah the reality mm. of india is that young couples across caste and religion lose their lives often for falling in love you know right and not keeping religion and caste as a consideration hmm. honor killings driven by caste are a reality does it mean that you can't ever show a happy marriage ever in any ad or any movie yeah i mean of course I mean, that that reasoning is completely ridiculous kind of, uh, no the fact and, that and, such such was such things are also kind of echoed by people who you at one point considered uh, you know informed <laughs> and 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 uh, credible is is yeah but before we move on uh, so dipta you want to weigh in on this on the politeness in engaging with the kind of political views that have emerged nahi nahi i think you said most of it but yeah i mean i i wouldn't uh, risk it just let's, let's just say that you know because uh, you know the reason i won't risk it is because of uh, again things that are happening on the ground i just wanted to kind of quickly give you an incident you know so i go out on walks in the morning and i know pretty much everyone in the neighborhood and that's always been my thing ki mai jahan pe rahunga i mean i need to know people uncle aunty bhaiya whatever all of those people i need to know so now a couple of people have recognized me as that guy from twitter okay or facebook or something and i in one case i really like shat you know because i got scared because i was like oh my goodness ye kya hai ghar ke paas to ye sab scene nahi you know because gauri has already happened right right okay and uh, then he's like that guy is like no no boss may be secular i'm like oh may be secular <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's like dada hum secular hain i'm like aap secular ho acha may be secular ho kisko batana nahi ha ha batana nahi theek hai ha mai ka theek hai that's what happened in the end of that conversation saying kisi ko batana nahi ki hum secular hain theek hai ha so that scene hai but isn't that sad isn't isn't that sad that one has to this is what fear yeah. does to you <laughs> Something similar happened to me uh, when I was taking. Uh, I was I was running in Siri Fort. This guy stops me. He says, uh, "You think you are too smart?" Commenting on you, and I was like, and he was this, you know, uncle who was not exactly in the fittest of. Say, I said, okay, so what's your problem? You can't talk like this. I was, have you fucking stopped my run to tell me this? And like, w- what do you hope to achieve? That will you convince me? Like, how dumb? But you're right. I mean, he didn't seem like an intimidating uncle. I mean, rather I've said. You have courage. I mean, to have stopped me in my run. I mean, you are the one who should be scared here. But anyway, so I have a couple of emails. After that, I just like to discuss what happened in Kashmir and this whole China thing, and what Farooq Abdullah said. I want to. I wanted to just add to this Tanish thing. What Sudipto said that you know the backlash offline. Now in this case, this online only. This brand manager of Tanish was forced to delete his LinkedIn account. Yeah. Mm. Mansoor Khan because he's Muslim and of course everyone attacked him saying that oh Mansoor Khan is actually the one you know giving out these ad whatever creatives yeah and and apparently it is it is it come it hits home yeah it's it's really close to someone doxing you you know pointing you out on LinkedIn sending you threats yeah like all these ugly people on social media that you see you know with those egg profile photos you don't know who they are but they're spilling over onto real life now i mean they're coming to people's houses they're walking up to you on the yeah, street that's that's why i'm saying one it's, can't concede space one if concede yeah. space then before you know it you'll have a governor who has the audacity exactly. to write the letter he did i mean no matter how bad things i mean 10 years ago can you think of a governor who would actually and it's not like a governor woke up wrote the letter and sent it someone typed it out some bureaucrat said okay this is a good idea someone drafted it someone did the final draft not one person said so you might want to reconsider this letter because this is okay in today's day and age and ramansa you is the psychophancy that plays the i mean someone he must not have written that him or he might have given some dictation hmm. even dictation doesn't happen someone right. else writes in the hierarchy and then it goes to the governor and the governor is okay say So I think it's the psychophancy uh, at uh, display. And on the seeding space bit now, imagine a simple ad like Tanish, 
you know, seeding space uh, mm. over Twitter backlash or whatever, fairly urban India sort of backlash. Imagine the impact this sort of thing would have on a young couple somewhere in a small town of rural India that wants to marry, you know, being yes. from different religions. Yes. All this is going to have a really terrible effect. I mean, these kind of things embolden these moral policing people at t- towns and villages to go after young couples. And love jihad is that. Love jihad is purely when the right wing's way of attacking a couple that's in a mixed a mixed marriage or a or a couple that's you know Hindu and Muslim. It's simply that. Sorry, you were no, saying. No, I said we just can't comprehend. You know of uh, fears which are happening in the rural areas. I I just gave you one example. I came from the rural area, and what is happening in these Muslims? They're just counting their days. Uh, you were saying, uh, Jeshri. I I was just saying that for interfaith couples, like Manisha was saying, imagine what they'd feel now. And I was saying the Special Marriage Act already has made it so difficult for these couples because they basically have to advertise their union up on the wall of some government office. And people are now doxing them on Twitter. People are taking screenshots of those who are going to get married under the act, trying to track them down, call them. So, I mean, this is something that is very scary. It's very scary. It's very sad. Okay. Just um, before I move on to the emails, wanted to read you a few lines of Bhagat Singh Koshyari's letter, the governor of Maharashtra. And he used to be the chief minister of Uttarakhand, na? At one point. Ah, he was he was president also of BJP in Uttarakhand for a long. Yeah. Time. He's is an old man. He's now. yeah. I mean, he's it's I mean Manisha's state. Ma'am, who UP se hoga? No, Uttarakhand ka. Uttarakhand ka. Uttarakhand ka tha. I met. He's from Almora, most probably. Oh God! <laughs> right, we're too close he to home. He does look. He does look very pahadi though. He wears that pahadi ah, cap also. Yeah. So a few Fairly lines good. from his letter, dear Shri Uddhav Ji. On the 1st of June, you had announced in your televised address that the state is embarking on mission begin again, Punashch Hari Om, from the first week of June. You had also famously declared on that day that the word lockdown is being consigned to dustbin from that very day. Then da 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 It is ironical that while on one hand the state government has permitted the opening of bars, restaurants and beaches, on the other hand our gods and goddesses have been condemned to stay in the lockdown. During the last three months, several delegations met me on this issue, demanding the reopening of places of worship. These included delegations of religious leaders, individuals, NGOs, and political leaders. You have been a strong votary of Hindutva. You had publicly espoused your devotion to Lord Ram by visiting Ayodhya after taking charge as Chief Minister. You had visited the Vithal Rukmani Mandir in Pandharpur and performed the puja on Ashadi Ekadashi. I wonder if you are receiving any divine premonition to keep postponing the reopening of these places of worship. Time and again, or have you suddenly turned secular yourselves? The term you hated. This is a governor. This is the caliber of people who are appointed governors. So and yeah, he's playing politics. He's just trying to say that who is the bigger Hindu uh-huh. in in Maharashtra, BJP or Shiv Sena? I I loved I loved one response on Twitter to this guy. He said he says when he said Naki, you have opened bars and restaurants, but not temples. So one guy on Twitter said, I think Rolf Gandhi. He says, sir. You can make temples at home. You can't make daru at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. So, घर में आप मंदिर बना सकते हैं. घर में दारू बनाना allowed नहीं है. That's a good one. So, um, okay, I have a couple of mails. This one is from Shankar. I promise I'll stop writing every week. Just wanted to ask you again about potentially covering clinical COVID nineteen content if it's feasible. Uh, for one, yeah, the thing about uh, clinical content is we have one regular writer. Uh, he's based in UK, JNR. In fact, his column just went yesterday. He is a public health professional and a practicing doctor. On anything else, that is, you know, which is why the science desk didn't quite work out because our editors and our desk can, you know, look at structure. It can look at fact checking, but things that are very technical or scientific, uh, you know, you need someone who understands that content to really. It has to go through that filter. That is the reason it's not really working out yet. Because mm-hmm. even the CNN, the science correspondent, is a practicing medical doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a trained doctor. Because then you can tell yeah. what you are, you know, claiming. Then Shankar says, "Thank you for spending a lot of time on the then and now in the education system. I appreciate it. I have been bringing nuisance, binging nuisance for the last few days. Manisha is fantastic, which brings me to contributions. In addition to my regular account, I would like to open supporting two additional subscribers. If you have received any requests from students or people who are currently out of employment and want to continue to support you but are finding it difficult, please let me know. I will be happy to sponsor their subscription. Shankar, thank you so much. Yes, that scheme still exists. Yes, we have many students who'd like to subscribe but are not able to. We shall definitely get you to sponsor two such students and people who are out of employment. 
Thank you so much for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Uh, then this email is from a lady who wants to remain anonymous. She says, Hi Nil team. I've been following News Laundry for a few years. Thanks for all the wondering work you do. I know you asked not to write in this week, but I didn't want to let this slide. I'm a fan of the entire Hafta panel and love what each of you brings on the podcast. Jayashree is a lovely addition and it's nice to see more female voices. Kiruba was a refreshing voice in Hafta 297. I would like to see more of her on future Hafta episodes. I enjoyed her insightful perspective on law and order and the judiciary as well as the underlying impact of gender and caste on regular issues. For all the teacher bashing on previous Hafta episodes, I want to say that I may have been lucky, but most of my teachers were wonderful and kind and I fondly look back at my school days. So shout out to all the wonderful teachers out there. I join you in that. I also had some wonderful ones, although some were horrible, but that's life. I'd just like to add that I realized that my subscription has expired at the end of August and I had been notified just once over mail. It would be use useful if you could notify more than once. Actually, that's what we're going to be doing, ma'am. Miss, you may be younger than me. Whatever is the appropriate greeting. So we will be doing that in the new website. The prompt is going to be more frequent when someone's subscription is running out. Also, we will have more options on recurring subscription because some credit cards don't, our current payment gateway don't support some recurring subscriptions. That will happen. Also, you go on to say, I just remembered Manisha's request to mention my background while writing in emails. So she says, I've studied engineering and management and now work on the technical side of things in a financial services company. Last, for the past month, I've had a hectic work schedule accompanied with studies, which does not leave me much time to follow news. I love listening to Hafta on weekends just to catch up. Thanks again. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful mail and for your encouraging words. And can I just take one more mail before I move to Kashmir? This is from Mohit. Hi, Abhinandan. Big fan of the entire NL team and the work you all are doing. To respect the word limit, I will get to the point. I'd like to hear the panel's opinion on whether the likes of Republican Times now can ever be held accountable. By accountable, I mean accountable by the news media fraternity and not the law. This is a general problem in India's institutions, including the media. Sudhir Chaudhary won the Ramnath Goyanka Award one year after he was arrested for extortion. Salman Khan is still celebrated as a star despite his driver running over people. A certain political leader holds a very important cabinet portfolio despite having spent time in prison for fake encounters. While in the West, we see Kevin Spacey completely ostracized by his own fraternity. Can we expect or at least aspire to see Arnab Navika and RSS ostracized? Again, keep doing the great work you guys are doing. Please get Madhu back on the hafta. Best Mohit. Okay, we'll have Madhu back on the hafta soon. But on this, uh, does anyone want to weigh in? On, I mean, we've discussed a long, we've had a long discussion on this in the past. By the way, Mohit, you might want to listen to that hafta on exactly this. But yeah, go ahead. No, in case of Sudhir, see, I think we should not give so much weightage to he getting the Ramnath Goenka. You know why why he got this? Uh, this uh, Nirbhaya case had happened, and Nirbhaya's boyfriend, someone there is a there is a guest desk because I was in that organization. I was with DNA, so 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 that person you know was instrumental in getting that boy, his uh, Nirbhaya's boyfriend to the yes. to the studio, and this guy did the interview. So so the more important is bringing that guy to the uh, you know studio, not so much uh, you know about the interview. And then, then once he was in the studio, so he just opened up, he just narrated the, he gave the narrative, whatever happened to him. Hmm. So I don't think, I mean, I think it was more, uh, it was an award more to uh, the entire team than uh, to Sudhir But this is a complicated matter, we've discussed uh, it at length. Hmm. Um, but does anyone in the panel want to weigh in on this? What do you think? I mean, can you um, completely cancel a person's work? Like I'm sure Kevin Spacey will get some more work. Where does one draw the line? I mean, there's always going to be a difficult conversation. Uh, Jayashree, um, Sudipto, Manisha, you want you have view on this? Um, no, I mean, I feel like we discussed it also a little bit when we were talking about the Bollywood petition. I mean, right now, I suppose it's progress that people have been waking up to the fact that their content is toxic in many ways. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know the details of why Chaudhary won the Ramnath Goenka Award, but from what Ramansa said, it I mean, it sounds like he just got an interview with a very, a person who was very much in the news at that point of time. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know what his past body of work is like. But yeah, maybe he's done some great stories. Maybe he hasn't. But I don't think there's ever going to be a point where India will cancel these journalists. I've never seen it happen before, at least not to this extent or in this context. But as a start, the fact that people are sort of calling them out online, that there are campaigns against them, that there are petitions being filed in courts against them. I think these are good steps. Yeah, and I think that within the media fraternity, I do hope, I do think there's... At least I've started seeing now that television news journalists 
uh, if not on TV, at least on Twitter, they do without naming maybe Navik or Nav- Arnab. They have been, especially after the SSR case, they have been kind of opening up and speaking about why the coverage has been bad. And I think it does shame people also. You know, when my people from my own fraternity call me out, it's it's sort of different, and you do feel a bit ashamed. So I do. I hope that uh, we have more and more people calling them out from within the fraternity, and hopefully that will have some accountability. But you know, even if you look at the Radia case, it's true that everyone who's named there and Veer Sangvi, who was, I mean, he was pretty much taking dictations, is now back to writing columns and all that. So he people do get rehabilitated. That's true. But in, um, I mean, Radia case was one case which had a lot of this. But in Arnab and Navika's case, I do think like in this particular case of this is the case of where journalists are breaking all journalistic norms. So I do think there has to be more backlash from within the fraternity. Because ultimately, it's going to ba- bite us back. You know, the kind of mistrust that people are going to start having for journalists, it's going to start affecting us. Shadipta, you were saying? I just feel like journalism as we knew it is over. And it is you guys who are going to now define what's going to happen from here on forward. I think television news has, I think it's run its cycle. Nobody is sitting in front of a TV waiting for the news to come on. So I think that's a dead industry. And the newspaper industry is a sunset industry. It's just unsustainable. So, yeah, I just feel like yeah, these are all like apocalyptic times. Everything is dying and I think that is hope for new things to be born. I don't know. I, 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 and you'll have to pardon this kind of slightly stoner kind of observations I'm giving. because uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> partly because, of course, that's true. Uh, but also because uh, I'm not been, I've been trying to, you know, between uh, Federal, which was my last news job and now, I've been trying to look at processes as opposed to news, uh, you know, and that for me ties in very beautifully with this play I went to yesterday, uh, put together by this collective, art collective in Bangalore called Mara, right, where they, they, the, the entire thing was about how uh, they went and tried to document uh, the women's yatra that traveled to many states uh, looking at uh, sexual violence against women. So this group from Mara tried to do their interpretation on it. And it was just like cut, 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 cut. And to stand outside that stream and just look at the top, top, top headlines makes you feel that, yeah, this is not something that is sustainable. It does seem like people have just given up on it. So, yeah, I, it, now it remains to be seen as to what you guys do, the online crowd. We guys, hopefully you will yeah. also be part of what we will do in some form or the other. And we will make that happen, Sudipto. So, now I just wanted the panel's views. And uh, since, uh, you know... Raman sir is right next to me, so why don't you start? Just to give context, uh, Farooq Abdullah has always been a rather clumsy speaker. He, in interviews, has often said things that later either his son has been justifying or, you know, it always puts his foot in his mouth. The latest is, he said something to the effect that, you know, with the help of China, we will get Article 370 reinstated. And now China has said that it is illegal to take statehood away and they have commented on Ladakh. So, and this is the second time, but they have specifically mentioned Article 370, it's illegal, ye wo. And of course, Mehbooba Mufti was released and the Abdullahs went and met her. Does anyone want to predict what will happen in Kashmir? Maybe next week, actually, we should discuss in more detail because Mehraj will be here. Mm-hmm. But A, this is a, and again, I'm on the fence on this. Like, I've discussed in the past that one stands up for values. And if that value is there's an overlap of what your country's government or your nation's general character at that time represents, then you back it. If it doesn't, you don't back it. Like, I don't think it would be patriotic for most Germans to say, yes, yes, Nazis are good and we are great. You know, because it was going against a basic value. I don't think it was uh, unpatriotic for the protesters who were protesting against the Korean War or the Vietnam War in America, which was this huge movement there. Because they thought what they were doing to Vietnam and Korea was unfair, even though America was doing it. Similarly, how does one look at a statement like Farooq Abdullah's? In India, is it, can't, we can't be America or, um, you know, uh, Germany where you can have people saying, dissenting that, no, this is wrong. And I agree with a foreign country that is saying this. Even though that foreign country is fighting with, with us, you get what I'm saying? They're there. China is being unreasonable and nasty when it comes to the land that they want in Aksichin. But they are also interfering in this internal issue. But... We have in the past said that what has happened here is illegal. So, is what Farooq Abdullah is saying wrong? And can he say it even if it's right? Is it correct? Guys, just, just for context, the his party has denied having said that. But um, anyway, we will just try to get a little more clarity on that. But sir, carry on. See, I, I personally feel that the politicians, whichever party they belong to, 
they have a one common interest okay so here in this case also when i saw the picture of this mufti and these guys sitting together how they can revive them in their own state as political party so that's the first thing how can serve their own interest so looking within they have not they are not i i mean the the news that i get from that state they are not so popular in their own state people do not uh, you know uh, cheer them up as as their uh, popular leaders so i think i mean when when you're talking about this statement if he has made that statement so it is just to i think uh, tell people drive home a point that we are uh, determined to bring uh, you know 370 back uh, whichever way we will seek help from the outside you know uh, from the outside so i think that is why he made that statement whether he, he has done it rightly or wrongly i don't consider it a treason so i don't consider it so a treason. i mean just i'll just in all fairness the hindustan times has quoted the national conference it has said that he never said that article 370 and the constitution will be restored in kashmir valley with china's help but it also says abdullah made these remarks during a television interview <laughs> so the same report that says that he never made these remarks says he made them in a television interview so i'm trying to get we need uh, to get the interview in an interview to yes. india tv abdullah noted that china was not happy with the nullification of article 370 which was scrapped in august last year by parliament as far as china is concerned i didn't bring the chinese president here our prime minister invited him to gujarat and even did jhula sawari with him He even took him to Chennai and had food with him. They said, "Till you restore Article Three Seventy, we won't stop because it has now become an open issue." May Allah wish that our people get help from their might and our Article Three Seventy and Thirty Five get restored. Okay, so, okay, so he did not say exactly that with the help of China we will get it, but the sequence of things that he said, one could say that he was saying, "Dekho, China ko yahan leke aaye." It's an implied meaning. Implied meaning, ah. though it's not direct. So that is how ah. it is. Ah. Uh, so yes, the National Conference is right when he said that he didn't say that. we will get article 370 reinstated with the help of china, china but in an interview in a series of statements it kind of can be said that he implied that but no, yeah no, that's no. up to i think these parties are saying that pakistan is against it china is against it so so they're just mustering their you know help to uh, to endorse that we also want 370 back yes uh, anyone uh, you want to come on this jashree you have a view on what is sedition ah. what is unpatriotic is patriotism even a value worth preserving in 2020 i think uh, patriotism is a very overrated concept so um last month though i think karan tapar had interviewed farooq abdullah where at the time he said that the kashmiri people don't feel indian they would rather be ruled by the chinese i think karan tapar asked him again are you are you sure of this do you really mean it and he said yes so this was in the wire Again, do I think that was an unpatriotic thing to say? No, I don't, because I also don't see why the people of Kashmir need to demonstrate patriotism to India. This is not something that I believe in. And um, with respect to the Chinese comments, I mean, I think we should also remember that Narendra Modi has barely even mentioned China's name when it comes to describing the Ladakh conflict, the face-off, the standoff, however we describe it. I mean, he. had a radio program on that sunday where he talked about oh our poor soldiers we must be brave and all but he didn't actually mention china at all by name he similarly had had another uh, i think there was some document that was removed from the ministry of defense's website where again it had mentioned chinese transgressions but that document was quickly taken down so when india itself is being so spineless on that front why should you expect politicians or other people to demonstrate the same thing that's my opinion you know when it comes to uh, you know so I, i'm just speaking from ha- having a few very dear kashmiri friends and i'm sure when mehraj comes in next next week he's going to talk probably be able to talk, shed more light on this but uh, about the abdullahs and mufti and all of that you know this just recently a few of my kashmiri friends came back to bangalore just to breathe a little bit risking uh, covid they came just so that they could get out and experience bangalore and all of that and they were saying that you know uh, if it is an open air prison uh and if kashmir is jail then these muftis and these guys are basically you know in the movies they show no these guys who are also prisoners who are very friendly with the jailer mm. and who get you cigarettes and who will get you hash and they'll get you contraband and they'll get you home food you know all of that so that is one thing the other thing of course this china thing you know this this of course uh, is something that i uh, keep getting from from there you know from my friends and other sources as well which is that uh, you know they 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 do they are looking for international representation for their thing and uh, with a with a kind of unstable country like uh, pakistan you know whose voice at the international uh, stage is most often 
uh, you know delegitimized with you know increasingly in many many contexts they they are looking for a legitimate international power to represent them in some way their interests and stuff like that so i think that sentiment has if if today if this the, the abdullahs are talking about it it just re- reflects that it has come to a, the surface a little bit that they also are from time to time have to account for the aspirations but of it's the not this it's not a new concept it is in tides uh, no not as far as i have experience in and my please do not go by you know i'm sure mehraj will come next week and trash mm, this uh, but i this is based on me only merely on the limited sample that i have of friends and a few sources there mm. which is that uh, they do look i mean obviously pakistan is looked up to as a country that can represent kashmiri aspirations at the international stage because not even the congress or any indian party will go beyond the thing of okay we will discuss only aspa and no, nothing more so dipto i think you are right because these leaders have no credibility yeah, that in their is, own states yeah, huh? the, the, yeah i mean i discussed that in the interview with him and i must he was very candid in saying that yeah i mean that is true to an extent uh, but manisha you have anything on this no i think you guys covered most of the points on this but you know one thing that i think is similar is if you've read this book called worshiping false gods by arun shori which basically he has used all his time and he's extremely smart man very well read in wanting to basically trash b r ambedkar as someone who was against india and its independence now he's yeah. taken a whole bunch of statements out of context and if you have context what ambedkar was saying was not wrong ki bhai kyun brahman ko kyun problem hai mm-hmm. kyunki aaj you can kick them also and you can kick us also mm-hmm. you guys leave they will kick us only so he's taken a few of his writing and speeches saying that he was a british toady he was a stooge of the british he was against indian nationalism he was anti national matlab aap aise to what is the value you have to preserve a value not a bloody a government or a geography right mm. i mean so i so separatism just... as a sentiment need not always come outside the geographic boundary of a nation, nation right and that is what i to, to my mind ambedkar represents he's he's a he's a i mean to me the most glorious separatist that india has ever had right he said and uh, you know despite the fact that he subscribed to the the geographical boundary of india ideologically he was a separatist in every way exactly and and, and he he was he said we have to preserve values na i mean i mean i'm paraphrasing but it wasn't ki acha ab india ye bol raha hai to ha yahi theek hoga ये अगर नहीं बोल रहा तो साले ब्रिटिश ज्यादा अकलमंदी की बात कर रहे हैं तुम नहीं कर रहे खत्म बात सिंपल व्हाट इज योर वैल्यू सिस्टम दैट यू लिव बाय आई मीन यू डोंट लिव बाय योर पासपोर्ट राइट यू ओनली यूज दैट व्हेन यू हैव टू क्रॉस इनटू अनदर कंट्री यू लिव योर डे टू डे लाइफ थ्रू अ वैल्यू सिस्टम एंड दैट डेफिनेटली टेक्स प्रेसिडेंस ओवर यू नो द स्पेसिफिक्स ऑफ अ फॉरेन पॉलिसी और एनीथिंग एल्स ओके सो आई जस्ट लाइक टू क्लोज आई हैव अ कपल ऑफ मेल्स आफ्टर व्हिच आई जस्ट वांट अ फ्यू कमेंट्स आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन फॉर आवर पैनल स्पेसिफिक वन this again he wants to be anonymous why would we have so many i mean i understand our subscribers who want to be anonymous because some of them are you know forgy some of them are government officers but these days there too many of want to be i i i wonder if this is a sign of the times that people are just afraid to speak yes. their mind hi nl team mandatory i love what you are doing cannot thank you enough i know this might seem misplaced rant uh, but uh, do try and have a discussion the child adoption process in india it breaks those people emotionally who are agencies claim to help it denies good life to abandoned kids it is just wrong on so many levels as a harassed potential parent who has to suspend the adoption process after 3 long years of staying apart from his life partner because of an imaginary rule it pains me to be a citizen of india i can elaborate if ever needed i will not reveal your name but um, thank you for writing in thank you for your support but i know what you're talking about because i know a couple one half was indian and the other half is not the process of adoption in india is bloody ridiculous especially if one of the parents is not indian and if you're going overseas but we hear you i'll just give you your initials rm maybe he can write on it if he wants to so rm why do you write on it yeah you send us just write a piece on it on your first hand experience of the process and uh, we will fact check it and we we may get back to you to kind of corroborate certain things but sure i mean we can is a very good podcast on child adoption a three part series so i will recommend that to read I right <coughs> but maybe rm can write a piece and Haan. you can check yes. if it is sound on editorial yes. filters we can carry that could i also just chip in with a recommendation for that sure. um, on the adoption experience in india sino india's sino india's first ever podcast was this thing called dear pari it breaks down the heartbreak of india's system the entire process what the parents go through what extended family goes through so 
it really does. I mean, if this is something that the writer is struggling with, it really helps you to analyze what it is and how to work through it. Right. And this email is from JG. JG also wants to remain anonymous. I've been thinking for a while to write my first mail to you. But today something happened which made me write it. I was reading this book from Vivek Call. Its name is Bad Money. Inside the NPMS and how it threatens the banking system. I was surprised to read the names of Manisha and Atul Chaurasia in the acknowledgements. It came to me as a pleasant surprise to see two of my favorite people's names as I have seen them discussing more about politics than economics. Not that they can't, it's just that politics creates much more noise. It's always nice to see your favorite people's names in a book you are reading. So yeah, that's all I had to say. Abhinandan, you're awesome. Meghnath explained that a big relief. I wanted to ask when Madhu is coming back. Well, soon, hopefully. Um, we want to get her back, but right now she's not moving out of her house at all. But we'll get her on a on a Zoom call, but she's Zoom exhausted. She's doing so many webinars and seminars, but maybe we can get her next next week. But yeah, Manisha, I didn't know you were in the acknowledgements. I've read that book. I clearly didn't read the acknowledgements. Yeah, and even General Panad. So two books. I can be immortal now. <laughs> what have they thanked you for? Acknowledgements just as an, I guess maybe because of the editing work that I've done for him in News Laundry. So maybe like, maybe he's probably, has he used any of that in the book? Has he used any articles? And he well, have. yeah, he's used, I mean, there's some overlap. He hasn't like. Mm. So maybe some of those could have come from ideas we discussed or something like that. I'll ask him though and thank him. Right. Now, mm. I have the following question for the panel before we wind up and I take everybody's recommendations. And of course, if everybody has anything else to say, let me start with Sudipto. Now that Shiv Sena is contesting 50 seats in Bihar, what should their slogan be? To get Bihari votes. Kaisi padi mar Maharashtra mein ab hum aaye hai Bihar. Vote doge. Dude, you ran a campaign of bashing up people from Bihar and UP. Isse kehte hai chutspa. This is chutspa. Matlab ab hum wahi ja ke vote maangenge. How many, I, if they win even one seat, I'm telling you anything is possible. That means you can change. That means next year we can have a Muslim prime minister. We can have a Dalit home minister. We can have... If Bihar can vote Shiv Sena in, then you can change the minds of people very quickly. I mean, right now, I oh, think... I don't think Shiv Sena has any, any presence in Bihar or anything. They probably just act as vote cutter party. Bhi nahi hogi pe. Plus, I think, you know, I am having a severe deja vu feeling. I think we've discussed this before. So maybe they did this in general elections also. Did they contest during the general elections in, in Bihar? Bihar? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I feel like we've have. discussed this before. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't think anyone's going to... I anything. see it more for a reason that Biharis are a very sizable, uh, you know, population in Maharashtra. Lots of them. Okay. Mm. So maybe, I mean, Shiv Sena wants to encash on that. I mean, they... They, uh, I, I they mean, want they, to go for a change of they image. They may get... Int- yeah. huh, they may... I mean, in the past, they might have in- intimidated, you know, these people. But now, the fact that these people stay there, they are laborers. Plenty of them. So maybe they just want to change their image. They want to go there, seek their uh, votes. So I think that could be one of the reasons. What, what do you think? Uh, possible, not possible, Sudipto? Uh, I think, yeah, the last part of what Raman sir said, I think makes a lot of sense because uh, mm. at different points, the Shiv Sena has kind of gone after different kinds of communities. But if you, again, based on my visits to Bombay and parts of Maharashtra, whatever, you know, there is the same communities are still working with Shiv Sena in a very... Uh, if not amicable, I mean, they're very much part of the system. So the there is some kind of, let's even say, cosmopolitanism that Bombay as a city itself imposes on even its most hardline parties. And, and, and yeah, the fact that it is a destination for a lot of people from Bihar might lead this party to go and try and fiddle around over there. But I just don't, I mean, I don't know what kind of calculations are at play. But if Bihar is the topic of conversation, watch out for Paswan, young Paswan. Uh, I'm very uh, interested to know what he's going to be up to. I mean, you know, there have been defections into his party. So, yeah, that's that's one one guy to watch in these elections. Jayashree? I mean, I don't really have an opinion. I don't think the Shiv Sena is really going to be much to look out for in Bihar. I mean, I do wonder how popular is the Shiv Sena itself in Maharashtra outside, you know, your Bombay, Pune, Thane and all that. Right. But yeah, so I would agree with Sandeep though, where I think that Chirag Paswan is way more exciting to watch. I mean, he... Almost definitely eat into the BJP's votes. But, but there is a theory about Chirag Paswan being uh, doing the bidding of the BJP. Yeah, exactly. That's ah, yeah. Size. yeah. But of course, these kind of things. I mean, like in Karnataka, they said that the entire scam expose everything was BJP B team versus BJ- Yedurappa, who did not want his uh, influence to continue to grow. But to th- think that Shiv Sena scrapped this project 
the Aray Metro shed and uh, apparently some few hundred crore had already been spent on it. It was, I mean, you know, it's it's a huge victory because nothing is done on for environmental reasons that this is going to ruin the environment so you won't cut so many. So the fact that he took this political risky because now the narrative that is being pushed by, you know, the BJP is ki just some high profile people like Ravina Tandon and all these fancy people they want environment and all, but what about the hundreds of people who would want more trains? I mean, when you kind of frame it like that, it seems that it's not day-to-day life, it's not a morning walk. Ka sawal hai. But ecology is not morning walk, really. So I just find it interesting that what is the image change that the Thakres are trying to go for? I mean, the young Thakre, Sanhi makes a lot more sense. I mean, when ah, but, like, sense. Ah, but like yes, karega. ideologically, yeah. how much he will change, yes, we don't know. So, on that note, uh, I'd like to wind up this week's Hafta. You can write in to us at contact at newslaundry.com. I repeat, contact at newslaundry.com with your feedback and recommendations and suggestions. I have a few emails that are left over. Akshat Bhushans, Vigneshes, and also Aman Nuranis. I'm sorry I couldn't read your email, but we have really run out of time. Your emails are a little bit long. So, guys, try to keep them below 300 words so I can get as many as possible. So I've read all the shorter ones in this episode of Hafta. I'll try to include the longer ones, these ones next week. But try to keep them short, please. Uh, write into us at contact at newslawny.com uh, and share your recommendations, inputs. Also do contribute to News Laundry. Click on newslawny.com and on the subscribe button and pay to keep news free because unless the public pays, the public will not be served as you can see what's happening with the TRP Pachada you cannot let news depend on advertising. It is not going to serve you. So please understand that and contribute. Also contribute to our NLCNA project. Basant and our young producer is channeling the dhul of Bihar for a month so that we can take good care of them. It will be nice if you can contribute. And also help me pay the legal bills in Maharashtra. We will tell you exactly what the case is and this is the kind of frivolous cases that we have to deal with, which also costs money. So it'll be very nice if you can do all that. On that note, can I get recommendations for the week? Let's start off with Manisha. So there's an interesting controversy uh, happening. Lots of controversies actually happening at the New York Times. But one of them involves Rukmini Kalimachi's reporting on the ISIS podcast. So um, Ben Smith's media column in the New York Times that forensically examines some of her reporting. And also uh, CGR's story on this, Columbia Journalism Review. I think it's quite fascinating that a newspaper finds space to critique its own. It's much needed. And also, I wanted to uh, recommend an Indian Express column today on uh, this whole Tanishk controversy. By who? By Samina Delvai. Okay, thank you, Manisha. Um, Raman, sir, your recommendation for the week? I had this Samina Delvai. She, uh, she, she stole I mean, your we, we know many such people, but she is a professor at Jindal Law School, a global law school. And uh, she is telling story of her mother who is a Hindu and a father who is a Muslim. Okay, they come from Maharashtra. And now the, in the extended family, now she is married to a Telugu and she has adopted a Northeast child. Okay, and then there is another person in her family who is married to a Chinese so so she and and the kind of language that they speak at home six seven language it's a beautiful story and 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 telling the reality and they say that tanishk what tanishk has done they are denying the reality if they are withdrawing the ad they are denying the so that's a beautiful story that she has done hmm. then i think sudhir mishra's movie uh, serious man hmm. on netflix uh, is pretty good uh, well well made movie i mean of uh, have you read the book no even I haven't read the book. I saw the movie. I liked it, but I didn't think it was great. But it I, I thought it would be great because I had heard so much about the book. So I'm mm. wondering if the book has been done justice too. Uh, so maybe, I mean, that does, it doesn't reflect, the, you know, the the caste divide and the urban dweller uh, so, so in, in, in a great way. But it's a good movie. Well-made movie. And then another movie on Prime Video, uh, which is uh, Stalking Laura. I think it was in 1993, uh, this California had come up with the first anti-stalking, uh, you know, law. Uh, is is it based on a true event. And uh, why this movie? Because I think they have digitalized and it's available in mm. 4K. So it's a beautiful movie. Right. Jeshri? 
I have two recommendations. Both are quite feel good. The first is a piece in the Economic Times by Indulekha Arvind. It's called How an IPS Officer is Changing the Fortunes of Students from Marginalized Communities in Telangana. So basically, there's this network of state-run uh, social welfare schools in Telangana. The students are all from very marginalized communities, very poor families. And there's one IPS officer who has made it so vibrant. The students do well in competitive exams. They do well in sports. They, they climb Mount Everest. They learn horse riding. They do all sorts of things. And it gives them a chance to sort of emancipate themselves. So it's a very uplifting story. The second story I want to recommend is actually a companion piece to this. In 2014, Fountain Inc. magazine profiled the same network of schools. This time it was in undivided Andhra Pradesh at the time. And at the time, the IPS officer had said he was disappointed that more and more student, of his students aren't qualifying for better exams and better colleges. And now when you look at the progression six years later, he's achieved exactly that. So the Fountain Inc. story is titled At Home at School. It's written by Govind Krishnan. It was published by Fountain Inc. magazine. So these are my two recommendations. Right. Shadipto, yours? I'm surprised you didn't, uh, ma- nobody mentioned Bad Boy Billionaires. So these oh. three guys. Uh... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But uh, Shadipto, I didn't, I mean, it wasn't made well. You know, I Actually, mean, you know, that's, I, you know, I, 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 I so thought. So much soft lensing. Uh. So much soft lensing. My goodness. It was like, uh, he's so sweet. He's so nice. Uh. He's such a Robin Hood. But. <laughs> but. <laughs> but he was a kid. Actually, I think the one that Shilipta was talking about, the, the one on Nirav Modi, Nirav Modi uh-huh. comes across as less, as not as unlikable as, as um, kya kehte hai, Vijay Malia and Subrat Rai. Because he's done a lot of soft lensing. Kiya hua no, hai, no, no, so. no, no, no. Hello, Vijay Malia meant something to people in Bangalore. Okay, please. You cannot call him unlikable. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, Subrat in Lucknow, yaar. Subrat was also quite a hero of Lucknow. Yaar, hum log jab college mein the, if you'll allow me about Vijay Malia to defend him, okay. They, see, I mean, we cared about very little else apart from like, uh, ha, bhai, abhi Bangalore cool ho gaya hai. Ha, pub wagera khul gaya, matlab set hai. We are going to be that 90s generation growing up in Bangalore, which was not Bollywood, it was Bollywood plus. Okay, and uh, yeah, so it was very cool. And Vijay Malia was at the center of it, and we would spot him at pubs and all that, promoting his own beer on the street, literally. So, both all of that. So, yeah, Bangalore cool mein Vijay Malia ka bahut bada haath hai. Achha, chal, but I quite enjoyed that series, I will say. I haven't seen it yet. I just saw the first one, Vijay Malia. Then, yeah, I think the other two, that is the least satisfying. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you why you didn't like it, because you're a journalist. You know, because ah. my biggest criticism with that was, they have done the same thing, that they fraud. Now, what did they do? What did they do? What did they do? They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. What did they do? Because in Nira Modi, they had a little bit of Punjab National Bank, from one branch, there was a letter of credit issue. And there was no collateral against it. And that was one point $5 billion ke letter of credit issue. Karta gaya. Nee, my another problem was ki the same socialites who used to go to his parties and they are describing Vijay Malle. See, the political angle is completely missing okay, from mm. the... That's right. Yes. And that's the Netflix. Ga nahi, the political... And who are the politicians who supported these jokers? Yes. Yes. How were they getting... Wo to hai hi nahi. Fir, reporters, man. Man, Vijay yes. Malaya's press conferences, any of these, of these corporate press conferences in Bangalore, as I suppose, as I suppose anywhere else in India, hmm. the kind of gifts you get, the kind of junkets you get, these guys kept the media so happy that yes. even now they're doing a fawning night. Yeah. I mean, I, as a Bangalorean who's like a little nostalgic about what he was like in at 19, 20, 21, and then, grew, you know, that is some separate from what these fellows did. No, like, yeah. okay, that's one aspect. But journalistically, they're so poor and there is so much stuff that needs to be done on OTP. Yes. Which journalists should be doing, not these uh, fellows who like to nice take to, I mean, know to take nice frames but don't know how to tell the story. Yeah, we so, need to get tell some honest stories. Manisha, you were saying? Wait, I was saying that, yeah, the, uh, Vijay Malia, in fact, he lashed out at journalists on Twitter also, no? That you guys used to ask me for tickets and you guys used to ask me for this and that and now you're going after me and uh, you used to come for my parties and do uh, this and that. I want to talk about yeah, the parties. Exactly. Vijay Malaya's party is a legendary in Bangalore. All the journalists have gone. In the year 2003 to 2004, mm. on December, Vijay Malaya's New Year's party was the party in Goa that was the most sought after. Yeah, I yeah. don't want to tell how, but I found myself at Vijay Malaya's New Year party. You? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because, and not just me, me and eight friends. We were at 8 o'clock. We didn't have a guest, sir. We were at 8 o'clock. 
man. <laughs> so because you know, I ye come. So there was eight of us and Vijay Malia. Now he was wondering what the who the fuck are these guys and why are they here? <laughs> and then Shobha Day, Rajdeep Sardesai, everyone came. <laughs> and, and I was like, and he would walk around in his house with bodyguards. I was like, why the fuck do you need bodyguards in your own house? But it was too funny because we did not belong there. We were not dressed for that. We were not. We did not have. Then not. N- n- we didn't have anything to belong there. So when we go out of the party, na outside is get there be a huge crowd. Hey, can you just tell Vijay I'm waiting? You know, can he get me in? We say yeah, yeah. We just tell him. We just tell him. <laughs> But you're right. Everybody would fucking go for his <laughs> fucking party. <laughs> it was such a. But um, sorry, I was saying on the Nirav Modi episode, there was one line which was very good for us. The who ki jo bhi editor jo bhi thi wo she was saying that of course people used to wonder where he's getting his money from because he clearly wasn't selling as much, but he was opening one store after the other. And then she says, but no one really cared because we were getting the ads. Ah. So every magazine was getting Nirav Modi bloody two-page, full-page ads. Right. So no one was taking a critical look right. of how is this guy's industry. And I was like, "Dekho, beta, ads pe chalogi to aise yoga. Yeah, Nirav Modi nikal jayega, to mere pata bhi nahi chalega." <laughs> okay, my recommendation is one of the most fascinating interviews I have seen in a long time. This is a hard talk. You know, Stephen Sacker does that hard talk. Uh, it's a daily on Baby BBC. So he interviewed Rob Schenk. He was an evangelical Christian pastor. Jo bhi kehte hain. So this pastor was extremely powerful pastor for the Republicans, and he was a huge anti-abortion activist to the extent he was the guy who would, you know, buy all those fetuses from hospitals and go stand outside and shove them in the faces of young girls who wanted abortions. He was at the at the at the top of the leadership of that entire campaign against a few of these doctors who were doing abortions. One of whom was shot and killed. Do you remember that case in the U.S.? It made headlines. When one abortion clinic guy was shot and killed, so this guy has had a change of heart, and he was interviewed on Hard Talk, and he spoke about why he did what he did when he was young, and why he thinks it's time to change. And I just thought every so many bigots I know should really watch this because they are exactly what he's talking about. You know how the you get seduced by power. You have you know people you know that the top Republicans want to talk to you. they will do what you say you can get them votes you can be their spokespersons and so many regular people who have completely lost their marbles purely because of stuff like this and of course how bigotry then makes you feel all emboldened so i think it's a fantastic interview and watch it for a variety of reasons it it's great insights on that note thank you sudipto manisha raman sir and jeshri thank you appreciate your time thank you all for listening do join us again for next week on hafta I am not sure whether the next week hafta will be on the new website the new website may actually go up this weekend but we are just making sure we can fix every glitch on the podcast player at least before we go live because many of you caught some glitches that had missed us so we want to make sure that when we go live at least that bit is fixed and then we will keep fixing the website until next time thank you and have a good weekend all the news laundry podcasts are available on stitcher itunes and any other podcast platform Please subscribe to News Laundry. Help us keep news independent. To catch all our podcasts on news, pop culture, current affairs and sport, visit newslaundry.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hold up. 